Hello and welcome to this Caspio training video series. My name is Ned and in this series I'll be showing you how to publish your Microsoft Excel file to your website using Caspio's cloud database. In part one of this video series we learn how to create a new application by importing our Excel data to our account. In part two we will focus on how to create a search interface, visualize sales performance using charts, and set up permissions for different users. Now that we're back inside our account, if you recall, we had our table built from scratch for the administrator, and we had uploaded our two tables from our Excel file. Let's open up our table for admin, and notice that it's a blank table. Let's go ahead and list John as our admin with an email at test.com, and password can be test. Let's go back to table design. Let's make sure that the email is unique because you can only have one email per password. So if you go back to Datasheet, if you have an additional admin, make sure that the email is different. Same thing for our sales employees. Let's make sure that if we open up the design mode, that this is checked to make sure that the email is unique. And now that we have our table set up correctly, let's go ahead and create authentications. And we're going to use authentications later when we pass or protect our data pages. I'll click on New. And we're going to select my admin table first. Let's use the express option. And uh, we're going to use email and password as our login screen for our authentication, our credentials. Let's click on create. And let's call this admin login. And here's my first authentication. Let's create a new one. This time for my employees. And again, you can use uh, custom for this one because we have additional fields in my table and it's recommended that you use the Caspio data source table but you do have the option to uh, use ID services such as Facebook, Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, OpenID or Google ID so let's use the Caspio data source and down below we have the email which is going to be a text field you can change the label to maybe email and then the password field is also password show it as password and you can also enforce case sensitivity if you want to add additional security to your password field. I'm going to disable it. And then when you're done, go ahead and click on Create. Call it Employee Login if you want to. And there's your second authentication. So now let's go to Data Pages and let's create our folders. And I like to build folders for each user group that my application is going to have. So for example, a folder for the administrator and a folder for the employees. And the most logical step here is to start building my applications inside the admin folder first. So we can click on open, click on new data page to start building my forms and reports. And the first thing that I like to build as the admin is the ability to run a report that shows me all of my sales revenue and I'd like to be able to display it on a chart and also see results underneath the chart. So we're going to go with the report style, combination chart, and report. The table that I'll need to display my data is the company sales because that's where all of my re uh, revenue figures reside. Uh, you can call this uh, manage sales report if you want to. Now I have one style in my account, the default style. You, you're going to have more options inside your account. And I also need to restrict access based on my administrator. And this is why we needed to create that authentication first. So now this is available in my dropdown. We click Next. And yes, I'd like to have the ability to search my records, so we're gonna leave this radio button as the first option. And let's have the ability to search based on salesperson name. Uh, keep in mind that you can also search based on other filters if you want to, uh, but uh, in because we have a limited amount of time, let's use the salesperson field for now. Click Next. And then here you have that field and you can make modifications on how you wish to filter your data. So for example, by default, it's always going to be set up as a text field equal, which means I have to know the exact salesperson's name. Or you have other options. You can have a drop down to manually select your sales employee name. You can do a list box for multi-select. Or my personal favorite, you can do autocomplete. And if you do autocomplete, that's like Google search. If you type in a letter, it's going to give you options what's available inside your table. 
and go with the contains criteria down below. That way it knows to search the entire salesperson's name as opposed to just maybe the first name, first letter of the name. Click next. And then on my results page, after I click search, after I've selected my salesperson's name, I'd like to be able to see their name, uh, date of sale, maybe country, and sale amount. Click next. Here we have the ability to actually group our results. And I'd like to do that because I want to be able to see performance based on sales employee name. And we're going to expand it by default. And we have the sales date, we have the country, and sale amount. I'm going to go ahead and insert what we call totals and aggregation at the bottom. And I'm going to drag my sale amount to the right because I want to be able to see a grand total at the bottom of my report for that specific column. We're going to do the sum and we're also going to apply this to every group. And when you apply it to every group, that means that every salesperson's name or every salesperson you have in that report will have their own revenue uh, tallied up. We're going to display 25 records at a time. Let's give the admin ability to delete records. And to visualize my data in a chart, I'm going to go with this option here, the first one. Click Next, and let's call the chart, give it a title, uh, 2012 Sales Data or Sales Performance. My y-axis on my chart, let's have that be the sales employee name. My x-axis is going to be my revenue. And then the calculation for Series 1, let's have that be sale amount. And we're going to do the sum like we did before. And now we configure properties for the chart. I'd like to be able to display my results based on Z to A because I want to be able to see the highest producer on my chart and the lowest producer at the bottom. Let's click Next. And for now, let's disable our details page. Keep in mind that you can enable a details page to drill down for each specific sales employee's figures. Click Next. And click Finish. And here's your first data page. It sits inside this folder. You can always close the folder to keep things clean, but if you open it, there's my data page. I can preview it. And let's go ahead and log in as John at test.com, and our password was test. If you forget your credentials, you can always go to your tables to retrieve them. Let's log in, and now we have the ability to search the data. If I type in letter A, this is how autocomplete works. It gives you options below from what's inside your table. Let's go ahead and search for blank values, or in other words, search for all the data. And here's my chart. It lists me all the results from highest producer, which is Jones, Jones all the way to Anderson, who has about 111,000. And below you'll see grouping based on sales employee name that shows you, gives you a tally of all of their sales revenue and how many sales they've closed in 2012. And this is the preview mode on how you can look at this report and what it looks like uh, once you're previewing it. In part three of this video series, later on I'm gonna show you how you can deploy these applications to your own website. The next thing that I'm gonna build for the administrator is the ability to manage his employees. And for that, I also need a report. And let's go into tabular format. And again, same concept as before. We're gonna select my company employee names or this table because that's where all their information is going to be. Let's call this data page manage employees. And again, we need to restrict access just to the admin. Search field, let's search based on sales employee name. Same as before, we're going to keep the same setting, autocomplete contains. And on my results page, let's list salesperson name, maybe email. Not going to make any changes here. We're going to list 25 employees at a time. And then let's enable a details page. And in my details page, let's show everything. Click Next. And you'll notice in the details page that everything is by default display only. In other words, it's going to be read only, so you can't make any changes. However, you can change that to a text field. Each one of your fields can be a text field. 
including the password field. We're going to make that required, and we're also going to confirm password, just in case an admin wants to change the, one of the employee's password. Finish. And here's your second data page. Let's go ahead and preview this as well. Quick search. Here's, here's the list of all of my employees. I can go to the details page, and now I have the ability to edit Anderson's information, including his password, if I wanted to. Okay, we're going to close both of these preview data pages. And now that we've set up the admin side, let's go ahead and open up the employee side now. And let's build a few data pages in the employees folder. So we're going to click on new to create a new data page. And I think the very first thing I want to build for the uh, employees is the form to enter new sales. So let's go with the submission form. Let's go with the company sales because that's where all the fields are. Now let's call this data page enter new sale figure. And this time we need to restrict access based on the employee. Okay, click next. And I want to be able to see all of my fields on the form. And again, country, I'm going to make this a text field. You can make each one of your fields required on the submission form if you'd like. Salesperson. We don't actually need to have them type in the salesperson name. We already have this information from our tables. So what we can do is we can make this field hidden. Authentication fields, and then you select the salesperson's name to automatically stamp their actual name in that sales table. Sale date, let's make this a timestamp. Sale ID, this can be an auto value a unique random number that gets assigned to that actual sale. Sale amount, this is going to be a text field, let's make it required. And user ID, sale is a salesperson name. We already have this information from our table, so we can hide this field authenticated based on user ID. So we know which user is submitting that sale. And when you're done, go ahead and click finish and close. And here is my first data page created for the sales employees. Let's preview it, and of course it requires me to log in. Now again, if you forgot your email and password, go ahead and go to your tables, open up the company employees table, and we have Anderson at com. Let's take a look at the full email. So at company.com, and password is Anderson. So let's log in as Anderson. And when I log in, now I can submit the country that I'm making a sale in and also the sale amount. So let's make that submission. Let's go ahead and say the country was USA and the sale amount was uh, roughly about 10000 in revenue. Click Submit and your submission was successful. Notice when I go back to my data pages now, if I go underneath the admin folder again and if I preview my sales report, and let's uh, pull up Anderson's information. Here's that new addition that belongs to Anderson. He made a sale today in 2013, and that's why you see that additional revenue. And up below, up above, I'm sorry, you see Anderson's figure. Now, if I go back to my search form, and if I search for anyone, there's Anderson, so he made a bit of a progress in his revenue, so he could catch up to Thompson and possibly move up to the top of the leaderboard. Let's go ahead and close that, and close that. And that's how easy it is to build just a quick sales application inside your Caspio account where you give sales employees ability to enter sales figures and the administrators to be able to view reports and also manage employees to who can log in and who has uh, privileges to what inside their account. That concludes part two of this video series. Please continue on to part three to see how we can now deploy and embed this application to our own website. For additional videos and training material, please visit howto.caspio.com. Thanks for watching.